feels like for some reason on Dragonshire, we just never, never, ever see that Aka. Um, it's weird it's too. It's fallen off a little bit. Like I, I, I'll see it here and there, but it's it's actually Chen, Rexar, Malthiel, Leoric. All of those have been pretty much at the forefront. Urel, um, even 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 the Zeratul. Yeah. Well, Zeratul was always like. I don't know. He was he, he got like, really he got really really hit hard by that the the XP globe thing. Mhm. Mm so like Zerato was always really bad on Tomb of the Spider Queen. And I actually learned this at BlizzCon while I was on the main stage playing against Team Liquid even though I knew it, but I it, it, it was reassured because what ends up happening is you have to get to the gyms, right? So like mm -hmm. having to step into the lane and in and, and, and like actually put yourself in danger zeratul is not where you want to be at you want to stand max range let them push in and then clear the wave on the tower right um and then if they chase after you can blink or whatever uh so introducing that mechanic to like the core of the game just like really killed him when it comes to the soul lane because he can't get into the lane to kind of yeah if he doesn't get something like a chin he's just gonna hit by the barrel cued spitfire on and then like he has no sustain, right? Like yeah. he can't heal himself back up once that happens. So, it, I guess from bush or anything either. Yeah, yeah no, you I can't agree. do that it's, anymore. It's, yeah, it's it's rough for Zeratul's out there. Uh, Rhaegar Li Ming though coming out from the members of Bandits Bruisers. That's a pretty aggressive start. Um, I love a Li Ming on this map. Poke potential is big. You have a lot of good resets. Uh, they could look for a gray main that would pair well with the Li Ming. Uh, they could look for an Anubrak as well that's just like full dive because the Rhaegar dives. They could look at Diablo. So a lot of good setup on the side of Bandit Bruisers. Not really showing their draft completely, but definitely they're going to grab themselves the gray main this time, locking mm -hmm. it incorrectly. But they're going to play a little bit. Looks like they're going to play a little bit more in the control sense, let the enemy team kind of step into them and then try and turn the tide in their favor using that gray main to get into the back line. Stuke off to disrupt a little bit as well. And then Joanna just being, well, Joanna just mashing her face into the keyboard and just running into the enemy team and surviving somehow some way consistently. But uh, they'll need some range damage, a mage, and they're, nope, they're just going to get rid of the solo. They're going to get rid of Deathwing. And they're going to like, sense. they'll let the Samuro through, like it's it's annoying but again this is the same he he has a very similar issue that the zeratul has in the fact that grabbing gems on this map mm -hmm. is not an easy task for him right he doesn't have sustain like samuro doesn't have a way to keep himself alive to get those gems so it's like that's not a character that you need to care about um which is why you see a lot of the time very sustainy um self-sufficient i guess is the word right yeah, uh like, soul yeah, laners like the, the, the urel who's gonna be up there yep. yeah urel yep. leoric yeah all of them are really good a varian to come out though so they're gonna look for i mean they could go colossal smash but they could just look for the the single target you know point and click stun and then wait what the is it collapse oh yeah what is is that a i guess it's like the the linear sorry i said gems i was thinking about xp globes that's my I followed intention you. I there, guys. yeah no you're we, good we just yeah. had a conversation about gems and xp globes and like samro is yeah okay anyways this variant pick though taunt that's like og we're mm -hmm. we're og now like i don't think that it's good but like i get it like maybe it is good with bloodlust right like wait 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 what is he going twin, twin blades? Blade. Yeah, that's what I, I I just don't don't remind me. I'm disgusted if it's a reality, but it potentially could be. That's why I was like, and I was like, and then and now here we are landing on twin blades. No, you okay, can't, okay, thank God. You can't spell win without twin blades. I'm honestly just... shook that <laughs> we have we have the Kiera picked up too. Like, can we talk about this? Actually, this is considered a pretty strong uh, matchup into Rexar. If you, as so long as you're not missing your skill shots and and you're and like I've actually seen like when Kyle was talking about like how to counter Rexar, uh, one of the one of the comments one of the comments on Twitter when he was just asking people in general and one of the in in his video he mentions this as well like Kira actually does pretty well into Rexar. She can be aggressive. She can get free stacks off of her level one. The big counter that they were they were pointing out is going to be range. Like Zul Jin is an, is a great counter into Rexar because of the fact that you can just sit there and build your your baseline quest. But I, I honestly like I think Kira has viability into the Rexar, and I'm really really excited about that. Yeah, I guess she has the self sustain too, right? Like 
she's able to keep that five stack on the Misha, assuming mm -hmm. that the Misha is just like doing In what Misha face. does, right? Like mm -hmm. just absorbing magical damage. Um, but we'll see. Uh, we're hopping into game number three here on Dragonshire. Uh, on the side of Ralph's Raiders, we're going to have Almar playing that Rexar. Carbon going to be on the Grey Main. Trimmer rocking the Joanna. Heavy on that Stu. And Tiger JK on the Jaina. On the right-hand side, we got the members of Bandits Bruisers. We're going to be seeing Centurion on the Li Ming. Vesper's going to be on the Cure. We've got Mason Blaze on the Rainer. Legacy on that Rhaegar. And Jachuggy on the very end let's go ahead and check out our first engagement in mid lane as we actually have some members coming on in through top are they just doing like a big wraparound like setup yeah oh, maybe they're getting just, a they're, just, they're waiting for kira yeah this will really tilt liam into the dirt too okay he's got the heads up heads up brain to uh rotate top safely but you can still get picked here right if you play too aggressively you can probably mm -hmm. wait to see the enemy team first uh, yeah, i do like it the, uh, sitting over there in front of the gate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're, they're going to wait patiently. They don't really have to show on the map until this bottom wave actually starts getting pushed in. You'll see them start moving around. But I like the joke of Liam actually just got done watching the How to Counter Rexar video by Kyle. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're now locking it here atop to counter it. So Maybe. I mean, it's, it's a good video. It's not too long. <laughs> something you can maybe watch while you're, like, eating a sandwich or, like, having some soup or something. It's perfect. What type of sandwich are you eating, Baja? Me? Uh, usually I get like some 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 spicy chicken uh, from the deli, and then I usually do uh, like, a, like a good like Colby Jack cheese or something like that. Mm. Something simple. Heat it up in the panini press if I want to melt that cheese, oh. or just have it cold. You know, I'm get a little a, fancy if I want to. I'm a uh, Italian guy. He's oh, that's that's. I like cold. That's... I like cold cut sandwiches. I don't know. It's. I get it. I get it. Oh, it doesn't Vester's look like Liam's be... doing very good here, dude. Vester <laughs> in this top lane is, yeah, they're going to get forced back a little bit right there. Uh, we'll see how this works out. They did have to use the grapple to get away from the Rexar, and uh, it's not the longest cooldown on the grapple. I believe it's like a 25 second on that. It still feels like a very long time, but we do have our first objective face up and available as uh, this is four talents here coming through in a second. We'll see what Varian does. Do they split their sword? I'm expecting this just to be a taunt Varian, realistically. Um... That's usually what I go. Yeah, it's with, got, especially it's, with the yeah. level one Lions Maw, but um, and that's gonna be exactly because the slow from Lions Maw being completed out is so valuable. As uh, we actually have Mason Blaze getting harassed by this Rexar, and this is exactly what Rexar players want. <gasps> like they want massive rotations to come up into the lane to try and force them back. And now this is free push in bottom lane for the members of Ralph's Raiders. This is exactly what Ralph's Raiders wants because. They're, bandits, bandits, bruisers are just doing exact. They're just responding exactly how bandits, Ralph's Raiders have set up this entire map. Dear <laughs> Lord, tongue brain, twisters, like, I wanted to get so many points across at once, but I couldn't. Lee Ming will go down. Legacy is going to be able to back out of there. They get, they throw down the slowing totem as they back out. But um, I, I feel like their whole yeah. team's tilting out right now. What's going on? They three man ganked the Rexar. They all got chunked to ten percent health, and then mm -hmm. Centurion pulled up bottom lane and blinked in to an entire team in full health under a magic resist aura and instantaneously died and now they've lost not only a fort but they've lost a kill they have no control over the bottom of the map anymore mid is lost it's it's a this is a calm this is you know domino domino effect right yeah you lose you, you three-man gank the rexar and in doing so you lose everything and now you're a level behind on Dragonshire, and you've lost control like bottom fort is so important on this map right because it's what allows you to kind of control the bottom objective, right? It protects you. Best for team, maybe able to get out of there. A nice patient, patience there on his W to try to hit the Q as they chase him. Couple of sustaining yeah, get away. They, they got the, the carnage stab and then they were able to heal off of that. That was just really well timed out from them, but they're gonna be forced back. This is potential Dragonite, but unfortunately Rainier is able to grab bottom lane. So no Dragonite going over to either side just yet. Um, you were mentioning, you know, the importance of a bottom lane and fort and all that. Even, even just the front gate and the well itself Ooh. is such a massive advantage because mm -hmm. the fact that you can just tap well and get back into the fight you're not rotating it's not like well sky i found you hold on they're gonna be diving under the rexar if you can get past the bear sometimes that's a way to kill them but a couple little b steps out from valimar as lee ming actually goes down in the mid lane to the uh to the gray ming yeah this is this is getting a little icky there uh they might even lose the mid towers uh, for that gank again there's so much you know, this Rexar pick is actually just causing so much focus on it, right? I, I, I like to think that if you're going to give the Rexar up, 
but then you need to dominate the four man, right? Um, yeah, in doing absolutely. So, in doing so, you can have a top laner that hard pushes. Um, you can, you know, you can't afford to have two v ones being lost. Like, look what's happening here, right? We're focusing on this. But meanwhile, if we look at the big picture, look what's happening in the bottom lane, right? The camps are getting invaded. Middle's pushed out. Uh, they, they, they now have control of their own ogre. They, the hard camp will be spawning in the bottom lane soon, right? So mm -hmm. we're just losing so much to focus on a character that really isn't doing other anything other than holding top control. Like, that is not the entirety of Dragon Chair, right? That's, that is the hard part about this, and I think, and, and Ralph's Raiders is just getting, they're getting the Rexar game that they want, and this is lining up really well for them. Tremor doesn't even care about the engagement. Okay, no, they do care about the engagement. I was about to be like, they don't even care. They're gonna go for the, straight for the Dragonite, but they're just gonna shield glare out. They do have 10 talents here in favor for the members of uh, Ralph's Raiders. We do have Jaina popping the Water Elemental in bottom lane. This is Mason Blaze getting some good sustained damage, and then Lee Ming comes down here as well. Tiger JK looking for the kill onto Mason, gets the Ice Lance, finds the kill onto them. Centurion now 1v1ing, but this is a, this is a oh, variant coming no. down. They, oh my Oh my god, are we serious with this? Jishuggy should get the taunt and the auto in there. Heavy coming through was looking for a potential uh, heal, but now um, we actually have the Rexar in top lane unleashing the boards. They don't get anyone with that one, but Heavy's still pushing out bottom lane. They did go into spine launcher, so they, can't, they, they can still poke at Jishuggy. They don't need that auto attack into them. And they've managed to push up bottom lane. They should be able to grab objective. And if the top lane fight goes well for them, they can get Dragonite here. Looks like Joanna might sacrifice. No, they've got to get kills up here before him. Before that can even happen i think i feel like the the story of this game is 2v1s like we see their tiger actually taking a 2v1 and winning it mm -hmm. uh rex are holding a 2v1 in the top lane um every time it's a 2v1 right that means there's somebody missing somewhere else on the map and ralph's raiders are continuing to press that advantage that they're creating for themselves uh, actually Balmer probably caught out here by centurion stun is going to follow up onto the taunt and they finally are you able, you know, six minutes and 42 seconds in to take out the Rexar and let's see what they can do with this. Uh, probably want to look for a team fight, maybe start pushing for an objective of their own, or even take Dragon Knight off of the map. Um, there's a few options here, but they do want to try to probably tr achieve something during this time window that they've uh, gotten for themselves. Bottom lane is going to be pushed up a little bit. They do have a good camp in favor for the members of Ralph's Raiders. Bandit's Bruisers are just going to go ahead and clear that out, but this could be a potential Dragonite on the side of Ralph's Raiders, and I think Vesper is calculating this and seeing the exact same thing. Going to back off and get inside that spell armor from their wave. Heavy going to be backing off as well. I think they're going into mid. Nope, nope. They're going to be going back into top lane. And I think Joanna should be able to get the Dragonite channel. Unfortunately, Varian gets into bottom lane. Uh, I didn't even see that right there. Mm -hmm. And just it, the yakety sax music continues as uh, Wave of Force from Lee Ming, the Unstoppable, is going to be there for Joanna. So she didn't get moved by that one. Also, she comes out from them here, taking oh a lot of damage. Vesper gets the Ancestor healing just in time. So no Bloodlust from the Rhaegar. Tiger taking a whole lot of damage from the Orb from Lee Ming. As they're going to throw a couple of those back as they disengage. But now, bottom lane is going to be a rotation out from a couple members to be able to set up for the Dragonite once again, but Kira seeing this happening is going to try and jump onto this. Valmar should be able to send the bear up there. Do they have enough stall? Stun. No. Okay, he got it. He got the break. He got the 50%. Actually, caught out of position there trying to get that bear onto the objective. Another good rotation here from Ralph's Raiders, but at what cost, right? Uh, we'll see our Ralph's Raiders uh, actually going to be the ones that are pushing here. Um, mm -hmm. Bandit's Bruiser is able to pick up the kill, but yeah, they are going to lose a wall potentially both towers. I think the cannon, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so able to lose a wall at the cost of a Rexar and Nimisha, um, which is not a bad trade, right? Again, the bottom lane, so important on Dragon Chara. We usually see the game one through the bottom lane, having that catapult pressure, even just having the opportunity to run up that hard camp down the lane towards, towards the core, uh, all, all win conditions. Uh, but we have the Raiders... Uh, Gonna be able to hold this potentially from the Dragon Knight going through for Bandit's side. Joanna should be. Oh, oh she wait, the shield the line. Oh, but uh, Misha gets it in the top lane. They they end up going down because of that right there. And Li Ming. Oh my God, Joanna's body. <laughs> Dear Lord. <laughs> she wanted to go hang out in the. Uh, she was like a little gazebo over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, that was a good Ooh. good pick there. Really good pick and, and on time for uh, Dragon Knight. Right, Bandit's uh, gonna probably be able to. Maybe? No, never mind. Sorry, Misha exists. I forgot. And Liam doing a really good job here to, 
I hope be patient about this. If he does show here, he might get picked off by the Janna. 2v1 is not a great spot for him. He can connect his E to buy him some time, potentially for his team to rotate up. As you can see on the map, Varian's actually making his way towards Valimar. Uh, Liam? Are you going to be able to get away? The team is here. The Ancestral is going to connect. The Bear is sending up to two. Uh, we are going to see a one for zero, maybe a two for zero. Nice taunt there. Able to get the reset too from Shijugi onto Centurion, but yeah, two for zero, right? Liam doing a great job to stall there for his team's rotation. They're able to pick up two kills and a prob uh, probably a Dragonite. Yeah, it looks like Shijugi gets this right here, and that will be first Dragonite of the game, if I'm not mistaken, on the side of Bandit's Bruisers. We've been going for 10 minutes here, and they finally managed to get it on either, uh, well, on a side. And let's see what the split's going to be. It looks like Kira's going to be in the top lane. Li Ming and Rhaegar joining in through mid, and Raynor's going to go into bottom lane. Raynor does have the Raider, so it's going to be uh, good sustained damage coming out from them on top of their own. So they might look to do that together. And they also do have that uh, Exterminator at level 1 for a little bit of faster wave clears. Mason Blaze actually decides to rotate back up towards the friendly team. Actually, everyone coming in through mid lane. They're going to open this up a little bit further together. Get the Misha kill immediately. Tremor going to rotate. and going to take a little damage from... The Blizzard, they actually don't get the fort right there, and that is going to be a disengage out from members of Bandit's Bruisers. They find themselves up talent to your advantage first time in this game. I just want to take a moment to... Actually, uh, Trimmer, Unsolvable Pop, he's going to bless shield, try to turn around. Mason caught out, the bullet is going to connect. Carbon doing his best to kill him, but Rainer is just so resilient there. So many shields coming out, so much support there from Legacy, doing a great job to keep Mason alive. Uh, the board is slowing. Centurion turning on Tiger misses the magic missile, not able to pick up that second kill. Uh, really good turn there onto the Joanna. Able to pick up the Grey Mane with that great uh, healing from Legacy. But I, I wanted to take a moment to shout out my dad who watches these things. He loves Heroes of the Storm. Um, and he just so happened to text me and say, you would have won against Team Liquid if you guys had just pushed bottom and cord. So shout out to him <laughs> for reminding me. Um, after I talked about <laughs> the team just, just running down bottom lane with a hard camp. Um, but yeah. Hi, Max Dad. <laughs> Thanks for watching and supporting. <laughs> just take a moment to make me realize my failures. Um, <laughs> hopefully these teams won't do that to here today. <laughs> 4 to 7 in kills, 16 to 17 in levels. Top lane's got some pressure coming through with the double bruiser camp, but now they're going to be losing their forward and bottom lane on the side. Of Ralph's Raiders, Chuggy's going to be going ahead and getting a taunt onto Tremor. They pop the iron skin, bless shields, going to be ripped. Red main turns around, tries to go for the, tries to dive with the dark flight, doesn't find the kill. Rainer ends up going down in the trade right there. Tiger's going to get picked off. It's going to be a reset for Lee Ming. Heavy trying to make their way out of here, but I think they find themselves on a bit of an island, so they're going to be end up, they're going to end up going down another reset for Lee Ming. As they just continue to push in through bottom lane, they're actually going to have Legacy split off the side. Vesper's going to back off and make sure that this top lane doesn't get too much value, but we still see this bottom lane pressure amounting in favor for Bandit's Bruisers. But with the Dragonite up and available, they actually could look for a quick Dragonite on the side of uh, Bandit's Bruisers if they just give up the front gate. Yeah, they, I mean, there's there's a lot of knights in that top lane, though. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, they'll do a... a, a good number on those towers if they're not cleared up so centurion doing his best to do that we'll probably just see a double shrine hold actually tremor the slow totem <gasps> the slow totem earth grasp totem oh my 90 goodness slow for one second tremor with they the miscalc legacy with the heads up play actually and the dragonite is going to be picked up there i think chijuggy is actually in it so they won't have the taunt there in the dragonite and he looks like he is just running it down losing all the dragonite's health this is one thing you do not want to do when you get a Dragonite. You want to use it around your team. Otherwise, the enemy yeah. team will just chunk you 50%, especially against or, something like Jaina, right? Or you do or you do one of those things where you split. You know, you do like yep. a 2-3 like a, a or, or like a 1-4. So that way, the team focuses the Dragonite, but you have your team in another lane still splitting and getting that extra, uh, that, getting that extra value. But right now, I think mid lane and bottom lane is what they really want to go for right now. Because as you said, bottom lane is typically where you end through. Top lane's a little more difficult because that death bridge and all of that. And a lot of teams just kind of maybe focus on getting the fort for a little bit more aggression in the solo lane matchup. Right now, though, it's going to be trying to get this bottom lane and kick onto the Rexar. Not going to get them too far away right there as Greymane just continues to auto into them. Dragonite is... Oh, actually, Boar's going to be unleashed by Rexar. They're chasing further. Varian's going to pop the protection as I think the Bless Shield came out just then and they don't get hit with it. They drop the banner. What just happened there, Bob? Was, it, was that like... Was the... 
The bless bounced off of him, though. I'm so confused. It bounced off him, but he was protected. Wait, he might have got what? a cleanse. He might Did have he get a cleanse? Cleanse, Is cleanse on CD? Hold on, let me, let me, let me. Yeah, fight's happening. Oh, yeah, it's Junkie. He got cleansed okay, at the okay. exact moment. That's gonna be ancestral healing coming in just in time. As the lurking arm's gonna be there as well. Carbon looking to step forward. Chuggy very low. Final straight comes out from here. Doesn't find a kill. Chuggy's still trying to get out of here. Throws a lion's maw back to heal up a little bit. Has the well to tap. Gonna protect themselves once again. Legacy so very low is gonna drop the totem, and I think that's as much as they get on either side. Maybe just some camp pressure here in favor for the members of Ralph's Raiders, but that was actually a pretty good turnaround coming in through the mid lane. Yeah, and shoutouts to uh, to Juggy for like tanking it out so hard there. He, he actually he was able to live. Legacy doing a really good job there of also playing up for his tank. He actually, you know, most support players a lot of the time you see them back off there and play behind, but he stepped in front of the variant and kind of grabbed the aggro and was like, "Hey guys, hit me." Sadly. Unable to doji his way out, but I will say that was a really good play by their team and a really good play by uh, Ralph's Raiders to run him down and pick up that kill. And now we are at the pinnacle of Heroes of the Storm. Baja did level 20, level 20. Pretty much most forts are down, right? You would say that I would. Yeah. Uh, Ralph's Raiders are maybe advantage in the top side, but it's time for a little salsa dance from these teams. Um, see who can get that next Dragonite. Well, they're going to start in bottom lane on the side of Ralph's Raiders. I think they're going to more, start more in top lane on the side of Bandit's Bruisers, or they just split the Kira, and then the four man is going to go to bottom. I'm I'm watching what they're doing, and I mm -hmm. think they're, they're trying to decide as well. They're like, what are we going to clear first? So we are going to be getting uh, bottom lane Bruisers for the members of Ralph's Raiders. Bandit's Bruisers looking. Now they're just going to go ahead and clear top lane. Um, they got a massive push through bottom, though. They could just this grab is, this. Yeah, this is the death push down. for sure. Yeah, I think, that, like, if they find a killer two here, this is huge for them because they got Siege Giants, they got Catapult. What are Catapults are hitting for 285 right now? It's, it's uh, it, This could be game ending if they find a killer two. We'll, we'll see what happens here. The Wave of Force already used from Centurion as well, so there's mm -hmm. not going to be able to. No, no pick potential off of that. And the level 20 talents from the side of Ralph's Raiders are really strong. We have the Root Boards, we have the AoE Shield. As you see, it's going to come out here. Full engage on Shijogi. He's going to be able to use the Protective, the Silence, though, taking out the. Li Ming not able to blink out because of it. Uh, Vespertine with a five-man booming kick. Connecting on all five, but that spell war is still alive. They're doing so much work as they're working their way towards the core. Yeah, with Grey Main Jaina on the core right now, this is a little difficult. Vesper's going to try and make a play happen. The ice block is going to come out from Jaina. We have Vesper now split in this fight. Final strike, I think. No, I, I thought I heard the wind-up for it either way. That's going to be core rapidly falling. And the members of Ralph's Raiders are going to be able to take game number three on Dragonshire. GG. Well played. Ooh, right at the end. Ouch. <laughs> he said, Ooh, just he twist said, the knife. He said, wait. Right at the end right there.